Okay, so, so today we're just uh, doing a little bit more practice on solving logs, uh, solving log equations. There's nothing really new to put in your notes, so we're just having to do a little practice here. Um, I'll pause while you do. Okay, on the first one, you should have said, I don't know what this equals, so I'm going to put equals x. And then you can write it in exponential. 5 to the x equals 24. Raise your hand if you wrote it correctly in exponential form. Good. Now, let's say you want to solve that. If you want to solve that, you can't the way it's written. Because this would have to be a 25, and then you could write it with the same base. But unless it's in the same base, you have to go back to what you had in the first place, which is this. And use a what? Base change and use a what? They're plastic, they have buttons on them. A calculator, yes. Okay, so you'd use a calculator and you'd log 24 over log 5 and you'd know the answer. Okay, so but the question here was to write it in exponential form, and we did. It was that 5 to the x equals 24. It's just that I wanted to challenge you to figure out how to solve it, and you'd have to use a calculator on that one. All right, this one, 9 sixteenths to the x equals four thirds. If I could write them with the same base, it says no calculator there. So I'm supposed to have the same base for these guys. Well, and I'd say, well, what would probably be a good base with a four thirds and a nine sixteenths? The four thirds would probably be a good base. Now you could do it with nine sixteenths and make that your base. Okay, just for a second, let's do it that way. So that means I want to write this as a 9 sixteenths. How do I write a 4 thirds as a 9 sixteenths? Well, it's got to be 9 sixteenths to some power, right? Negative makes it flip. One half. And then it's really easy. X equals negative a half. Okay? Raise your hand if you knew that. Could have done it either way. All right, good. Next one. This one, it says evaluate it with the calculator. So that's log what over log what? log 16 over log 3. And we're assuming these are base what? Base 10, because that's the only way the calculator can do it. So don't even have to write that if you know you're going to use a calculator for it. If you don't write it, we assume you mean base 10. All right. Who feels comfortable with those three? All right, that's pretty much everybody. All right, so today we're going to be basically solving log equations uh, except now the X is over here. That's why I'm not making this a whole separate day of notes because, you know, it's it's pretty much the same kind of problem. I still can set them up saying 2 to the X equals 8. 2 to the X equals 8. I know that one in my head. 2 to the what is 8? 3. But if I want to solve these in a different way, though, there's a really fast way. If calculators are allowed, you can just go... Figure that out, and I got the answer. It's already solved for x, right? X is already alone. So all I have to do is figure out what that is. Can I use a calculator and figure that out? Sure. What if I wanted to do it without a calculator? Calculator would be log 8 over log 2. What about no calc? Then I'd use the, pro the property, which says that if that base and that base are the same, then the answer is right here. So couldn't I write that 8 as a 2 to the third. And so then I could say, by using that property, this box right here is really equal to this right here, which is really equal to that. So I can just say 3 equals x, and I'm done. Because I'm replacing all of this with 3. All right. That's a lot to absorb at once. We'll see if, if you uh, get what I'm talking about here. Remember, we already did these, and now we're talking about the kind where they have an x on the right-hand side of the equation. So they're kind of already solved for x oftentimes. And so if you can just figure this out, you'll be done. You don't have to set it up into 2 to the x equals 8. You can, but sometimes it's just easier to not do that. All right. So here is a typical problem. And again, they did it with the 2 to the x equals 8 technique. And then they made the bases the same, and then they got the answer. But there's a uh, smarter way to do it than that. I mean, this, this way right here, I could go 1 half to the x equals 32. 
But then I'm stuck with one of those deals where I gotta like do a base change. If I'm gonna do a base change anyway, I might as well do the base change right here. Say log base one half of one half to the something equals x. And as soon as I know what that is, I'm done and I know the answer. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, so how can I write 32? It's one half to the something. Well, first I gotta get it to flip, so what does that mean? Negative, this has gotta be negative something. Negative, and then I have to get it to the fifth. You're right. And so that means I'm done. All of that being, those two being the same means that's the answer. And so negative five equals x. All right, so but this one is a little trickier. I'd like you to write this one down on your scratch paper. Log base five of one over 125 equals, and the tricky part is, it doesn't just say equals x. It says it equals 2x minus 6. Okay, so write that one down. Okay, I hope your first thought is that I should get this 1 over 125 to be written as a 5 to the something. If I can just simplify one step at a time, one of my favorite sayings. So one little step at a time. What could I do to write this as 5 to the something? Well, first I've got to get the flip. What's that? Negative. And then what? Go ahead, tell me. 5 to the, so final answer, 5 to the what right there? Negative third. Let me just double check that. 5 to the third is 125. And then I go negative, makes it flip to, neg to 1 over 125. Yep, that's right. So now people go, well, isn't the answer just negative 3? You always said the answer was negative 3. It is. The answer to something is negative 3, but it's not the answer to the whole question. It's just this answer right here is equal to negative 3. So I can replace all of that with negative 3. Do you see what I'm saying? And now I can just solve, add 6 to both sides, divide by 2, and it'll be really easy. So this is the big thing you got to understand is that when you make these have the same base as each other, like that, then, yeah, that's the answer, but that means it can replace this whole statement right here with negative 3. All right. Let's try to do this next one. It says x over 5 to the third is equal to 6427. Let me just write that out. x over 5 to the third equals 64 over 27. Well, I'm not thinking of what 64 and 27 could be. Um, I mean, I suppose I could rewrite that somehow. But when you're solving, what, what's the goal in solving? You're trying to do what? Trying to get the x alone. If I want the x alone, what should I do to both sides? Put it to the one-third. And then I'll have x over 5 equals... Uh, 4 over 3, and then it's really easy. You remember cross-multiplying? 20 equals 3x, and then just divide by 3, and I'm done. All right. That's the basics of the uh, problems that I need you to do for today.